Uh, section 5.9 today. Operations with complex numbers. Okay, as we look through this today, if you can do a problem like this, so 2 minus 3x plus 7 minus 3x. Let's say I take a problem like this. Can anybody combine like terms there and give me the answer? It'd be 9 minus 6x, okay? 2 plus 7 is 9, negative 3x plus negative 3x is negative 6x. Guess what? We're going to look at problems like that today, except for instead of these x's, guess what we're going to have? And guess what? 9 minus 6i would be the same thing there, okay? So we're looking at problems just like this. Um, we're talking about i's and kind of some of the operations. Now, it gets a little bit tougher, but that's some of what we're doing today, Okay? Um, so first thing here, starting off here, we have i. i is defined as the number whose square is negative 1. So for example, we already know i equals the square root of negative 1. We've talked about that already. Um, for example, let's say I have negative 9. What's the square root of negative 9? 3i. Uh, 3i. Great. Now today what we're going to add is what i squared equals. Does anybody take a guess what i squared is going to equal? Negative 1. Nice job, McCool. It is negative 1. Now, let's look at this. Why is it negative 1? Let's look here at i equals the square root of negative 1. Okay? If I were to square both of these, the square and the square root cancel, which gives me i squared equals negative 1. Oh, look. It's just math. It makes sense. Okay? So, yeah, i squared does equal negative 1. You need to recall that today as we go through this. Um, an imaginary number. Talked about that already. Imagine a number is a number of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and b cannot equal zero. So that's an imaginary number, has both parts there. Or sorry, that says the i there. And then complex numbers, imaginary real numbers make up the set. It's written as a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and again, b cannot equal zero. Um, you have the complex numbers there. Okay. The complex number plane. All right, as you look through this, um, the complex number plane is the imaginary axis is the y-axis, and the real axis is the x-axis, okay? So if you look at my core or number plane here, the imaginary axis is my y-axis, and then the real axis is my x-axis. Um, Chaz, if you do me a favor and just go straight like this with your arm, does everybody see that poster right there where Chaz is pointing to? Nice job, Chaz, way you pointed out. Uh, that's the axes right there. It's the real and the imaginary axes. And we're going to deal with some graphing on there. All right, for example, if I'm going to graph, let's say I take the coordinate uh, negative 3 plus 2i, which is what that poster says. All right, that means I'm going to go negative 3 on the real direction and then a positive 2 on the imaginary direction. That means my coordinate is like right there, negative 3, 2. So negative 3 plus 2i is like thinking as the coordinate of negative 3, comma, 2. Okay, and then if you were to graph it that way, kind of sort of way to think about it. Um, let's take another example here. What if I gave you, you know, the coordinate 2 minus 4i? What would that be coordinate kind of similar to? Yeah, it's like saying 2, negative 4. So I'm going over 2, down 4. It's like this coordinate right down there. Okay, so it's kind of another way to think about it. And then we have absolute value. Absolute value of a complex number, now this should say, it's kind of formatting error here, a squared plus b squared. Now, let's think about this. What does absolute value measure? What's it actually find? Who remembers the absolute value actually find? What is absolute value? What does it mean? It's the what? It's the distance, yeah. For example, let's say I have give you the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is also what? 2. 2. Now, why? Because absolute value is the distance from 0. Okay? It's the distance from 0. That's what we're talking about here. Well, that's what we're doing here. But now we're going to take a problem like this where it's, say, like it's 2 minus 4i. And I want to find the distance from 0 there. Well, if I look at that coordinate, does everybody see that coordinate right there? I need to find that distance to zero. So I need to find that distance right there. Well, what am I going to do here? I'm just going to draw in a, what type of shape is that? What do we have here? 
a right triangle. Hmm, what can we use with a right triangle to find some distance? What's that? Pythagorean theorem. That's where this comes from. The square root of a squared plus b squared, that's just Pythagorean theorem. That's what it is. So if you look here, this would be like your a and your b here. And it's a squared plus b squared. Um, take the square root of that. So when you find the distance of the complex numbers, uh, it's just Pythagorean theorem, really what it is. And again, same idea here. You can graph the complex numbers like graphing real numbers. The real axis corresponds to the x-axis, and the imaginary axis corresponds to the y-axis. Um, they give you the coordinate 2 minus 3i. So that's like saying 2 comma negative 3, if you notice that here. And then if I wanted to find the distance, it would be like saying 2 squared plus 3 squared, then do the square root. So let's do a couple seconds here. Let's take a couple seconds to work these out. I'm going to graph and label each complex number on the complex plane. Number one, I have 1 plus i. What would 1 plus i be the coordinate similar to that? It's like 1, 1, right? So there's number 1 right there. 1, 1. 1 plus i is just like saying 1, 1. 4i. What would the coordinate 4i be similar to? Yeah? That deck's saying 0, 4. So positive 4i right there. There's number 2. Number 3. Negative 2 plus 0i. Now you have two zero, right? So there's number three. Two minus i. What's that? The coordinate kind of similar to? That back two negative one. So I go over two down one. There's number four. And five negative one minus three i. What'd that be similar to? Was I saying negative one negative three? which is left one down three, right there. Perfect. Nice job. All right, can you see how we can graph these on the complex number plane? Not bad. Next, now we're gonna do the absolute values. To find the absolute value of a complex number, use absolute value of a plus bi equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And again, why is that? Because we're finding distance. Remember, absolute value is finding distance. Um, so, for example, here, absolute value of 7i, it's like saying 0 squared plus 7 squared, square root of 49 gets me 7. Or I can think of a tougher problem over here, 3 minus i, it's like 3 squared plus negative 1 squared, 9 plus 1 gets the square root of 10. What if I give you the problem like this? What's the square root of 2? 2. If they give me a real number, just work it out. You don't need to do Pythagorean theorem, do you? Like, don't like, just throw everything you've already learned out the window. It's just adding to it. Like, let's say I gave you the absolute value of negative 5. What's the absolute value of negative 5? 5. Okay, just because we're adding the imaginary parts, you don't always have to do the a squared plus b squared. I mean, it works, yes, but recognize if it's a number I already know, do that part. Okay. So let's look at number 6 here. I have the absolute value of negative 8i. So that's like saying the absolute value of 0 minus 8i. Or 0 squared plus negative 8 squared. Handle what's 0 squared going to give me? 0. What's negative 8 squared going to give me? 64. Nice job. What's square root of 64? 8. The answer is going to be 8. Nice work. Number 7. 2 plus i. That's like saying the absolute value of 2 plus 1i. So I'm going to take the square root of... 2 squared plus 1 squared. What's 2 squared? 4. 1 squared? What's it? So I have the square root of 5. Can the square root of 5 break down? Nope. So my answer is just the square root of 5. Now again, 8's a problem here that you got to recognize. Absolute value of 3. We, we've already learned this, guys. What's the absolute value of 3? 3. I don't need to overthink a problem like that. Okay, it's just going to be 3. 9. Absolute value 5 minus 2i. As I work this out, what do you think I'm going to have to do here? What do I have to use, Jake O'Connor? So square root of what's 5 squared plus negative 2 squared, right? 
square square root of five squared is what? Or and then negative two squared is twenty five plus four gets me square root twenty nine. Can that simplify? Nope. So there's your answer. Square root twenty nine. Take a couple seconds. Work these last two out on your own. Hi, right, Hannah. What am I gonna get there? Yeah, you end up getting nine. Because you end up doing it, you get 9 squared, square 9, or 9 squared is 81, square root of 81 gets me 9. 11, Allie, what'd you get for 11? 5, how'd you get that? They have 4 squared plus 3 squared, right? Which is 16 plus 9, which is square 25, square 25 is 5. Good work. That is not it, because last part now, we're going to add and subtract complex numbers. Um, again, I talked about that earlier. Adding subtracting complex numbers just like adding and subtracting like terms. Okay? So you're just combining like terms. <laughs> remember, I can, if it's a negative, remember I can change the subtraction to addition, add the opposites. We can do that as well. Okay? So just combining like terms there. And then here comes the multiply. Multiplying is the tough part here. I squared equals negative 1. That's kind of the key. If I have a number on the outside of parentheses, what do I always have to do? I need to distribute. So when I distribute, I end up with an i squared. And what does i squared equal then? i squared equals negative 1. And then I simplify. Now, when I write the answer, I always want to write my answer in the form a plus bi. Always want to write that. That's what's considered like standard form. Always write in the form a plus bi. And then I have a problem like this down here at the bottom. When I have two sets of parentheses, what's the short acronym we always think of? FOIL, which means to, what's it mean? Distribute. Okay, so I have FOIL, which means to distribute twice. Take the 4 times the 5, 4 times negative 1, 2i times the 5, 2i times negative 1. Okay, and then I need to simplify. Again, what do you recognize here? Again, i squared. i squared equals negative 1, and then I simplify down to get 22 plus 6i. And again, write it in the form, a plus bi, everything we do here. So let's take a look at the first couple problems. Number 12, I have 6 plus i plus 3 minus 2i. Now recognize, does everybody see the addition sign in between there? Does everybody see the addition sign? Yeah. So I'm combining like terms here, right? So what's 6 plus 3 going to get me? 9. So I get 9. What's i plus negative 2i going to get me? Negative 1i. Negative 1i or negative i. So I have 9 minus i. Okay. 13, I have 9 minus 3i minus 2 plus i. Okay, again, you combine like terms here. Does everybody see the subtraction sign between? Subtraction means subtract. I'm not multiplying here. So what's 9 minus 2 going to get me? What's it? 7. And then what's negative 3i minus i? Negative 3i minus i gets me? Negative 4i. So I have 7 minus 4i. Nice job. And then we have 14. 3 plus i, parentheses, 2 plus 2i. What do you notice I need to do here on problem like 14? I need to FOIL, multiply, distribute both times. So I'm taking 3 times 2 and I get? 6. 3 times 2i and I get? 6. i times 2. 2i. And i times 2i? Squared. Now remember, what does i squared equal? Huh? Uh, negative, or two times negative. So that's really like saying negative one. So really, I have six plus, ooh, six plus eight i minus two. Does everybody see where I get the eight i? So really, I have six plus eight i minus two. What's six minus two going to get me? Four. So I have four plus eight i. Okay. So recognize on a problem like that, when I get i squared, I need to simplify. All right, how are we doing there? Pretty good? Hannah, feeling good? McCool? Yeah. All righty. You know what's next? Take a couple seconds, try these six on your own now. Okay, let's walk through number 15. Joe Daniels, what'd you get for 15? Three minus eight i is correct, nice job. Two plus one, negative four i, plus a negative four i gets me negative eight i. Uh, 16, Chaz, what'd you get for 16?
No. Negative two i is what we get. Because you get one minus one, so the ones basically cancel out there. And then I have negative seven i minus a negative five i. So it's like saying negative seven i plus five i, which is negative two i. 17. On problem like 17, Kyle, what do I need to do here first? I need to? Distribute. So when I distribute here, I get 20i plus 15i squared, right? Yeah. Now, what's i squared equal? Negative 1. So really, I have 20i minus 15, right? But is that how I want my answer written? No. What do I want first? So negative 15 plus 20i should be my answer right there. 18. What happens to squared, though? i squared, it's substituted out because I, negative 1 equals i squared. So it's like substituting negative 1 in for i squared. Um, 18, McCool, what'd you get? Cool. Oh, yeah. It's negative 10i. Yeah, if you look here, 6 plus a negative 6, well, Zero. the 6 is cancel. So you have negative 5i plus negative 5i gets me negative 10i. Um, 19. Allie, what do I need to do on a problem like 19 here? I need a FOIL, multiply. So 2 times 3i gets me 6i. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative i times 3i gets me, sorry, negative 3i squared. And then negative i times 2 gives me negative 2i, right? Now what's i squared equal? Negative. So really it's like saying 6i plus 4 plus 3 minus 2i. And when you work that out, what do you get, Allie? Oh, 7 and 3. Yeah, yeah. 7 plus 4i? Yeah. Nice job. That's correct. Now 20, I get 2 plus 4i squared. What's it mean to be squared, Jake O'Connor? You have to multiply by its what? So it's 2 plus 4i times 2 plus 4i. And then I need to FOIL or multiply there. When you do that, you get 4 plus 8i plus 8i plus 16i squared. What's it mean to be i squared? So really, it's like saying 4 plus 16i minus 16. 4 and negative 16 gets me... So I have negative 12 plus 16i. Nice job, and there's your answer. So recognize the problem like 20 there. If you have an exponent, make sure you remember it means it takes the time itself. All right? And here's your assignment.